If you've ever taken a flopper in a pool, you know it feels like hitting something hard. Every good diver knows you must hit the water right or it won't get out of your way. You must make your dive so as to cut the resistance. Just as a fish moves around without noticing the ocean, we live near the bottom of a great ocean of air. And although a hundred times thinner than water, air has a force in motion that is enormous. In order to obtain a permanent record of resistance offered by various shapes, liquid is used instead of air. And its action recorded by a motion picture camera. The paddle wheel powered by a motor draws the liquid through the center passage and sends it around the outer passages. Slots are used to eliminate whirls at the turns and create an area of even flow. An object is placed in the liquid. Aluminum dust is added so that we can see clearly what happens to the current. Any form cuts through the liquid as it would through air. This shape is not streamlined. As the liquid strikes the front or leading edge, pressure is built up which causes resistance. Then, as it rolls off the rear, it is thrown into spins or eddies which create a suction behind the body. Regardless of shape, some resistance is unavoidable. As the liquid goes by the shape, its direction of flow is changed, and this change of direction wastes power. By rounding off the corners, this change of direction is made more gradual, so the amount of effort is decreased and resistance is cut down. Making the shape longer and thinner tends to cut down resistance. This decreases the violence of the eddies and reduces the suction in the rear. With an even thinner shape, the liquid flows more easily and there are fewer eddies at the rear. A streamlined shape with blunt nose and tapering rear eases a hole with the least resistance and brings the liquid together at the rear with the least disturbance. The ideal streamline follows a strict geometric design which engineers call the parabola. The length should be just about three times the greatest width. Such streamlining makes it easier for an object to get through the air by reducing wind resistance. The higher the speed, the more it helps. Any automobile traveling through the air meets the problem of wind resistance. So engineers set about applying the principles of streamlining to the automobile. And by rounding the contours and tapering the rear have smoothed out the flow of air around the body of the modern motor car and smoothed out eddies at the rear. Of course, to a bird, cars today might seem already well streamlined. But as seen by a worm, the modern motor car is anything but streamlined. Yet the bottom of a motor car represents about 20% of the surface and sets up considerable wind resistance. The development of more complete streamlining for motor cars will be the problem of engineers of tomorrow. Someday, this problem will finally be solved. Sometime in the future, the completely streamlined torpedo car may come into use. Elevated highways, wide and level, may let us go 120 miles an hour. But such a torpedo car on our streets today would be entirely impractical. However, practical streamlining has been applied with success to the finest motor cars today, with many additional advantages. The streamlines of the new turret top give greater strength to the body of the car than the old box-like construction of yesterday. The slanting windshields and windows cut down glare from rear and sides and make safer driving. Streamlined fenders enclose the wheels more completely and help to keep the car clean. And they protect the wheels from force of strong winds, making the steering easier. Sloping rear panels allow for more tire and luggage space. These modern streamlines round out all details and absorb them into a good design with new beauty and dignity of appearance. 
This practical streamlining brings to the new automobile increased comfort, quiet, convenience, safety, and beauty. Practical streamlining brings a modern motor car into step with modern airspeed styling, which has real economy and efficiency.